This is the Extraordinary Podcast, and my guest today is Amanda Goins. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so thrilled to be here. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, you know, just waking up and getting my day started. Um, You're the first person I've talked to this week that's actually been in the same time zone. Where are you? Where are we talking to you from? I'm from St. Albans, West Virginia, which is a small city um, outside the capital, about 20 or 30 minutes. And um, yeah, just small town and a small state with big plans. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I love to hear. It. So let's talk about some of those big plans. Tell us about what you got going on. Tell us what you're doing. What you up to? Well, um, I'm up to a lot of things right now. Um, I just launched my podcast, which is my main focus right now. That and, um, and what's I, the name of that? Should make sure we plug it proper. Uh, the name of my podcast is Heightened Life, and you can find out information about it and my blog and everything at heightenedlife.org. So. Excellent. So tell me about this podcast. What was the impetus to get this well, thing started? Because this isn't your first go round, right? No, I, I've been dabbling in podcasting for a while. I did a, a previous iteration of this podcast about a year ago, and I had done a Radiohead podcast for about a year total. And I, so I like knew a I fan loved page podcast. or a fan podcast for the band Radiohead. Yes, it was called awesome. Lotus Flower on a Friday. And that's because that's an area I felt fairly expertise at. <laughs> I have <laughs> I have a collection of about 60 Radiohead albums. I've met Tom York. I'm very much a super fan. So I figured I can talk about that. Um, and I started this podcast initially um, as a way to share my story and how my life has changed um, over the years. But then I realized I wanted it to be more about the people that inspired me because I feel everybody that has made great changes in their life has had people they've looked to for inspiration along the way. And I certainly have. So I wanted to share conversations with people like that with everyone else so they could maybe get you know inspired as well so. so tell me about one of those people that has inspired you and helped you along the way oh goodness um one of your favorites so, or, or, so who many. was your who was your first guest that you went after who was the first well, one that you my, thought man this is the guy i need to go after my first guest is um ann bonnie she's going to be on monday so i haven't actually recorded my first guest spot yet the two i've recorded so far were just First, I told my story to set yeah, context, the and then story. I, yeah, and then the second one was just kind of an update and an explanation of where the podcast was going and and a preview of some of the guests. But um, and I, I'm still getting to know. Um, she's really great. She's a motivational speaker. She's lived in twenty some countries, and she's super inspiring for me personally. My oh gosh, I've got I'm glancing at my bookshelf now because I have like hundreds of books and i don't know how many of those are inspirational but a lot you and you um, want to get each one of those guys on the show or each one of those no, authors on well, the show I'll, be awesome, I'll mention right? one that inspired me a lot but i could never get on the show because he's passed away but um back in 2008 i somebody shared with me um alan watts the book on the taboo against knowing who you really are i think i said that right because i can see the book right now mm. and then I, I actually bought the book and read it in 2012 and that's one of my favorites because it just took something that is so profound and he put it in very simple terms as simple as possible and that and the four agreements were two books that really kind of um set my life on a different course and and just opened me up to the possibility that things could change and i think that's a, a big thing is it, when you have something or someone who lets you know that you don't have to keep your life on the same trajectory it is, you know, at the moment. So it's interesting. I've, I've heard so many Alan Watts clips, you know, mm -hmm. with that low fi low fidelity music in the background. And I love I lo those. I love those too. Yeah. I, I go watch those streams every night. They're, they're really interesting, but, but what's ironic is yeah, as much been, of a reader that I am, I've actually not read any of Alan Watts work. So I guess I need to jump on that. That book is just, yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. I love it. Um, and that, and my favorite, one of my favorite books of all time, though, is Leaves of Grass by Walt Whitman. I just feel oh, like every time wow, I read it, I kind of nice. get a different take on it. Um, my husband, I, we're both big uh, book collectors. And for, I don't even think it was a holiday, just a, a couple of years ago, he gifted me with a first edition 1900 copy of Leaves of Grass. And wow. that was huge for me. So I've got my readable versions of it. Then I've got that one kind <laughs> right. of like up on the top of my bookshelf. So the on cat display. won't pounce it. <laughs> right, but, yeah. right. That's amazing. That's cool. A, a so, woman yeah, after my own taken, heart, man. That's I try awesome. to take inspiration from everything from like, you know, 
the simplest things to the most complex and just that's, that's kind of like the the concept of leaves of grass you know i believe a leaf of grass is a journey work of the stars like the littlest things in life are just as as meaningful a lot of times as the big things and that's something i've really been trying to appreciate recently so that's amazing while we're talking about books and going down that realm what's one book mm -hmm. that you've given away the most oh gosh um you got I gifted have, a pretty awesome book there by your husband i'm curious what yeah, you give away i had a friend one time that um wasn't doing you know very well and i gave her several books um one of which was the art of happiness by the dalai lama and um oh, howard cutler and i have the the sequel to it but i still she still has the initial one but that book i read in college and it, it really it really just changed my whole concept of like being present in the moment made me realize you know that so much of the time I was always looking into the future, worrying about the past and not appreciating the present. And I thought maybe that would help, you know, her with the challenges she was facing at the time. Oh gosh, what else? Um, I've loaned out a lot of books and got them back. Um, oh, that's I, an encouraging sign to actually get some back that you loaned yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And I, I try to make sure though, that when I loan out a book that I don't I wouldn't be upset if I didn't get it back because I think, well, maybe because so, there are books like that, like my first copy of the four agreements, a girl loaned to me and I moved. So I still have it. So, but I appreciated it because it was one of the books that changed my life. So I hope yeah. she doesn't hold animosity. So no. <laughs> ah. Well, my thought is, is as long as they use it and they read yeah. it or they, or they re it or whatever, as long as mm -hmm. it's not just gathering dust in a corner somewhere and you are thrown in the trash. That's yeah. all I care about. I have a few books that I, that I keep that I don't, loan out just because I'm like, I would be crushed if they didn't get returned. And what's one know. of those? One of those, um, for my 18th birthday, my parents got me the collected poems of Emily Dickinson and my mom wrote oh, a wow. nice inscription in it. And, um, and I've, I've read the whole thing cover to cover. I'm a big fan of poetry and specifically hers. So, um, I've thought, I actually thought about learning that one out when I learned the Dalai Lama book and because I, my heart was all in it. I really wanted to help this person. So I had this big stack of books and my husband was like, are you really going to loan out all those? You know? And I was like, well, maybe I'll keep a couple and, you know, which. Or get it to like that, 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 that library concept one at a time. You, you read this yeah. one, bring it back. I'll give you the next one. Bring it back. I'll give you the next one. Yeah. Now, that's well, the girl was in the hospital, so I knew she'd be there for a week or two. So oh, I was okay, giving her yeah. plenty of reading material to choose from. <laughs> Multiple resources to choose from. I was um, one time I'd been in the hospital and I remember that I, I was a friend of mine sent me just a bunch of magazines to keep me busy. And I'm not even a big magazine reader, but it was just the thought that she wanted to give me something to keep my mind engaged and keep me motivated while I was in the hospital, you know, really helped me. So I just, you know, I wanted to yeah, pay awesome. it forward, I guess. So. That's amazing. That's awesome. I love that. Well, and, it, and it's encouraging to hear somebody reading the classics and stuff like that. Like, you know, nowadays it's everybody's it's either some kind of fantasy fiction or whatever, or like the self-help personal development realm, which all that's great stuff. But I think mm -hmm. there's tremendous value in, in going back to a lot of those classics. Yeah, absolutely. I've um, I kind of try to keep a pretty broad, broad spectrum of the types of books I read. I, I, like I've got everything from, you know, the newer self-help books to gl glancing at my bookshelf. Now I have, um, oh goodness, I'm trying to see what, what classics I have. Plato's, I mean, Ar Aristotle's on the soul. Um, oh, that's a real, I mean, that's way old. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I, just now, I, I was just starting to get into, or I'm just about to start getting into um, Ernest Hemingway. I've never oh, really read nice. Ernest Hemingway. I haven't either. Yeah, it's crazy, right? I've read a lot of the, uh, not a lot, but I've, I've read a good bit of like Greek philosophy. Um, I love the, are you Socrates. into all the stoic stuff? Yes. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've started, um, I read the off schools, the way by Ryan. Oh, Holiday. That's that was where I was going. <laughs> yeah. And I, I have a copy of the daily stoic, like behind my computer on my desk right now. I read that right. every morning, Excellent. but stoicism really was one thing that kind of like changed the tra trajectory of my life back in 2019. My husband started listening to the audiobook of um, of the obstacles the way when we were on a road trip, and I was like, "This is interesting. I should read the whole thing." I read um, that, and then Atomic Habits. Oh, um, that's a at, great! At one. the same time, and those 
two books were like the biggest game changers for me at that time. They I really just like, finished Atomic Habits last week. Oh yeah, I've read it. It's one of those ones I've read like two or three times. I've read yeah. it and then I've listened to the audiobook to kind of get myself, you know, restarted a couple of times. And it's, it's been great. Yeah. Well, I, it was very encouraging to me because I kind of came up with that morning routine and that three habits in 30 minutes a while back. Mm. Um, and I've just been kind of trying to continue to flesh it out, continue to hone it and make it as crisp and precise as I can get it. And then after reading hit that, uh, got that book and I had never, I mean, it's been out for a minute. I just said it was on the list. I never got to it. And so when I finally got to it. It was very encouraging to see how much of that was already in some of the work that I had done. I was like, man, I, maybe I am on the right track. It was very, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, uh, not assuring, but, uh, reaffirming. Yeah. Like yeah. reaffirming or something. Yeah. I was like, Oh yeah. man, like, okay, cool. I am. This might actually work. You know? I've been, so, my, my current reading, um, I, I started anti-fragile, um, by, Oh, nice. Yeah. I started, my husband's read all of those, um, except for, I think he's in the middle of the black swan now, but he's read all three of, of um, Taleb's books and he's got the, the technical book too. So I thought, I haven't know, read black swan. Mm -hmm. I haven't. Um, I'm just getting started on anti-fragile though. Cause I was just getting into that. And then I went to Podfest, and I was like, I, mm -hmm. I can't, I want to make sure I thoroughly get this and I'm not going to be able to thoroughly get this when I'm trying to do 50,000 other things. But I usually have a couple books that I'm trying to work through. I, I I usually pick a simpler book and then a more complex book, so I have something to bounce back and forth. I, I, it's so funny. I, I'm the exact same way, and I've even tried to what as I've slowed down and, and now, you know it comes and goes and it ebbs and flows. There'll be times where I'm just in the zone and just reading a ton, and there'll be times mm -hmm. where I get away from it. But um, but like you said, I try to keep one that's an easy read that that's just mm -hmm. light reading that, that I can like just get my eyes tired and then stuff that's like contextual what I'm learning right there where I got to be focused and present and paying attention to or something that's just really hard man I've been uh, I've got a couple of those Russian authors uh thanks to Jordan Peterson like Solzhenitsyn yeah. that's my other book Ooh, I'm reading man, is 12 hard. rules for life I just oh. started well, I just no, started that favorite. I'm on I'm on um I'm still on the the first one because that's another one I, I wanted to make sure that I had time to you know really read it but I'm I've got the audiobook and the the book so I'm listening to the audiobook and then going back and reading the book and I signed up for self-authoring so that's ah, nice. I was talking about um I mentioned to you prior that you know I would like to write a book and one thing I think that's going to be important for me is really writing out my story and reading it and figuring out what parts I might want to incorporate into a book or something someday ah, it's brilliant yeah I love and uh, what I love about no, there's so much I love about Jordan Peterson, but that self-authoring program in particular is it's self-guided, it's self-directed, it's at your own pace. And, and it's really, I mean, there's a lot of work there. It's not just like the book. It's not easy reading. It's not light lifting. It's, it's mm -hmm. some pretty heavy stuff, but if you put the work in, man, what you'll often. get out of, yeah, the, the, the return is huge. And really, you know, I became exposed to him um, kind of, you know, th through, music like we were mentioning and um that lo-fi yeah uh, that, so we've come up with pablo my buddy that i met at podcast we've come up with a term for that we're calling it mo what i get he's come up with the term it's called mofi motivational fidelity that's well, what we're see, calling um it. the the channel wave the channel name for it is meaning wave mm. i yeah. need to write that down yeah. And the hashtag is meaning wave exists. See, I, I'm serious into it. I go to the, the chats every night. So oh, that's awesome. I'm a representative. No, but <laughs> I, I started, um, my husband actually found, found the artist through a tweet from Naval. And then we, we started listening and I was, I was hooked because he does Alan Watts. Mixes. Yeah. Yeah. And or then he'll I, do a Jocko I, Wilnick one too. Yeah. Like, yeah so many and cool then ones. I started listening and, um, I would pick up on some of the Jordan Peterson stuff and I was kind of like, well, this is interesting. I, I want to know more. And I started listening to some of his lectures and I was just like, wow. And I think for me, it really just reaffirmed that, you know, life's going to be challenging. Sometimes it's not always going to be rainbows and sunshine and that's okay. But, you know, you just got to kind of keep your eyes fixed on your goal and your destination and move through all the chaos as, as well as you can and, and all that. And that's, it's really just giving me courage, you know, and, and that's something that has really helped me to be able to step out of my comfort zone. Cause I, for so long, I was just like, well, I'd like to do all these things, but they'd be challenging and I would just not do it. So. 
And then you realize that that's all that challenge is part of the process. I mean, I think that's what Jordan Peterson has taught me more than anything. It's like that mentality of like, just buck up. Nobody cares. Go do your thing. Go do you go do the work. And if you put in the work, if you put in the effort, then things pay off. But you got to put in the work. You got to do hard things. You got to do things that you don't like to do. You got to do things that you may not want to do. But if you Mm -hmm. do that and if you got a focus and a vision and a purpose, then all that stuff will pay off in the long run. And, you know, sometimes it may not even turn out the way that you initially anticipated, you know, like usually doesn't. Yeah, because you have to be flexible enough to let your your plans evolve along the way, too, I think. And also, I just realized that even if things if even if I put in all the work and I don't get the results I expect, at least I won't regret not doing, you know, not trying. And I just, I, when I turned 40, I was like, you know what? No, this is, this is go time. I can't just sit back and let life keep passing me by, you know, so I'm going for it. And no, I think it's, I think so many of us that are in the, this space, we've kind of had that, what I call that come to Jesus moment where it's like, mm-hmm. we're just like, we, there's something more out there. We're capable of doing more that we, we expect more out of life. And now we're ready to ask for it. And I think that once you commit to that and once you start to ask the universe mm-hmm. or whatever you want to call it, did I, and I, this again, another quote from my buddy Pablo from the alchemist, he says, you know, the universe conspires to give you the favorite. things that you asked for. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's another book. The alchemist. Yes. Yeah, you know, funny, one. funny enough. My husband always makes fun of me for this because I used to have a really bad tendency of starting books and then I wouldn't finish them because I didn't want them to end. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like five pages away from the end of the alchemist. I need to read it. Wrap that's it up. Terrible yeah. confession. <laughs> yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, Hey, you're one of the, uh, most well-read guests I've had on the show so far. So that's a, I love it when some, I can talk books with somebody. For yeah. Sure. I, well, you know, for a long time, I wasn't actively pursuing things, but I was trying to learn as much and explore as much territory to find out what was right for me and what wasn't. And I think that's, that's part of the process too, you know, and I appreciate now looking back, even the times that were like super difficult and challenging and I wasn't happy they all taught me something and they were all integral to get me where I am now. So I wouldn't go back and change any of that, you know? So. Yeah. Well, and you're learning all along the way. I mean, what mm-hmm. makes us who we are are those experiences that mold us and shape us over the years that leave an impact on us. I mean, that's again, a lot of things we talk about on this show is like, what are those pivotal moments in life that shaped you, that turned you into the person that you are today, that created your values and, and, you know, your morals and, and what's important to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think that uh, we would talk about it when you're trying to figure out like what it is that you want to do with your life. One of the first exercises I ask people is, well, what it was it that you were good at as a kid? What were the activities that you enjoyed doing as a child? And if you can figure out a way to tie that into, and I don't mean just like, you know, riding my bike or, you know, mm-hmm. some, or I was good at baseball or soccer because I mean, whatever, but like, you know, like I've got one of my kids, my, uh, my oldest daughter, she loves to write out plays. And then put oh, these little awesome. productions and performances on. Well, I mean, it just fits her personality. So, you know, mm-hmm. at some point she's going to be some kind of a, a manager or, or, a, you know, like somebody producing, you know, events or producing plays or movies or whatever, you know, it's like, that's, that's what her little gift is. And then the other one, she's much more of a drawer and kind of artsy and into the, you know, the graphics and all that. So you can kind of see that'll be her path in life. And, uh, and so what I try to do as a parent is I try to look for uh, how can I foster that and keep that going and embed those things into the brain so that when they do get older, they'll go back to them and, and tend to re- want to rely on them more. That's great. Um, and I actually relate to both of those things so much. The first thing I was really passionate about in life when I was a kid was drawing. I started drawing like when I was two years old or before, you know, nothing profound, but I could make a cat that you could tell it was a cat, you know. And um, I was a theater major initially in college. So both of those areas are things that I really enjoy. Uh, Now, I haven't done any theater work since, gosh, late 90s. But but I do draw. That's one thing that really kept me going through, you know, times where I didn't know what I was going to do in life. I would draw or write and. Well, and even, but even like your degree and all your college is still like, it's in communications Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I want to say reporting journalism, journalism. So so like that's writing, that's all within that artsy kind of vein. So I mean, it all makes perfect sense really, if you think about it. Yeah. When I was in college, my, 
Oh, I guess it was my sophomore year and I started journalism. I initially wanted to do, I switched from theater to journalism and I wanted to focus on writing. But then um, one of the guys that was the manager of the college radio station came and spoke to us one day. And I just thought, well, that sounds so much fun. So I started um, volunteering at the radio station and ended up being on the most fun show. Um, my friend, Andy, who's from Grenada, who's like seven foot plus tall, like an, oh, an wow. awesome guy. Um, he and I did a reggae show and I didn't know a lot about reggae, but I liked it. So I learned a lot and I did the news and was the promotions director and stuff. So I, I learned, I love broadcasting and radio and things like that. So I think that's why I've, I've become so involved in podcasting. Cause it was I was going to say, I hear you are 20 years later, yeah. rocking the yeah. podcast, man. It's like, yeah. the, cause if you think about it, I mean, this is the new journalism. This is the new form of radio. I mean, this is taken over. Well, and I did, um, I did commercial radio from 2000, well, 2005 to 2007, I think. I just did weekends at a top 40 station here in town. Nice. And I liked that. But first of all, it was one of those things where I didn't have creative control to play the music I wanted to play. Right. It right. wasn't music that I even. Filling a list kind of thing, robotic. Yeah. Well, and it was, yeah, it was all automated. And I'm a big music person. And for me to be like, here's a great song from blah, blah, blah. And it was a song I didn't even like. I, I just didn't feel integrity with that. So right. it didn't I've feel done a couple of volunteer. Yeah. I've done a couple of volunteer shows and stuff since on, you know, with radio, but, but podcasting, I think gives you much more creativity and you can kind of hone your, your message and theme to what you actually believe and want to share. Yeah. I mean, the sky's the limit, really. I mean, there's, there's no restraints really. I mean, you can, and not only that, but like you, there's not even restraints saying you can only do one podcast. I mean, you can do as many as you want as Mm -hmm. as much as your time and abilities allow you. Yeah. I I might have to um, explore, you know, I'd I'd love to do a a collaboration at some point with someone, but I think right now I just want to, you know, uh, but I did enjoy when I had the Radiohead podcast. It's nice to have someone else to kind of um, bounce ideas off of. That's why I wanted to do an interview podcast with this one. Cause I'm like, I, I don't even want to hear myself talk for 20 minutes a week. You know, like, let me tell you, I mean, I mean, this one started off as an interview based podcast and it really is. I mean, that's what it is at its core. Cool. I mean, you, you just happened the few episodes you happened to listen to were the ones where just me, but mm-hmm. like I, I am incredibly uncomfortable with it. Just me. I do not like, I've I just interviewed a guy. I mean, all of his, I mean, he's 20, 30 episodes deep and it's all just him. I mean, oh, wow. they'll be like an hour long too. I mean, I'm just mm-hmm. like, man, how in the world you can pull that off is beyond me. I, that's just, whew, I can imagine. I appreciate and I, I, I actually love listening to those. I just want to make sure that like, I feel that I feel like what I have to say is actually useful to people before I right. ramble on, you know? Well, that's the problem is you're going to run out of stuff to say at some point. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, it's just you. I mean, he's, he's dealing in psychological topics. So he's kind of got uh, a little bit of a theme for it, but, um, mm-hmm. but still, I mean, it's, it's tough. I couldn't imagine trying to do that. I would that's much like rather with- have just shut up and listen to somebody else talk. <laughs> Well, see, with the Radiohead podcast, we did interviews occasionally, and but for the most top, most part, it was just my co-host and I, you know, talking back and forth about things yeah. going on with but the But then band, you're but... just riffing, having a conversation. It's yeah. very, that's very natural, as opposed to sitting there by yourself in a closet, mm-hmm. <laughs> rambling for an hour. <laughs> like, that's just... Well, the, the thing is, with that one, you, you run into the wall, especially when, when COVID happened, you know, the band's not releasing anything, they're not recording, there's no tour, so it's like, what are we going to talk about again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, I have a pretty, um, pretty big Rolodex of Radiohead information that to pull from, but it was starting to get to the point where I was like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like, you know, repeat all the same stuff. So, well, that's, a, that's an interesting concept with podcasting in general. Um, Cause I, I've been, I'm beginning to get to the point where I'm starting to talk with some other podcasters and help some of them and give a little bit of advice here and there, blah, 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 whatever, a little bit of coaching. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, everybody's got their first 10 episodes locked and loaded. Those first 10 episodes are solid, man. They got to know exactly what they're going to talk about, exactly the points to drive home. They got a really good data to pull from, but Mm -hmm. try to do that for a hundred episodes. And so that's yeah. the first thing I try to tell everybody is like, what is your hundredth episode going to look like? Because let me tell you something, those first 10 episodes, nobody's listening to them. 
No, unless unless somebody's like really serious into it and they're like digging back. Yeah. You know? your, your mom, your mom's yeah. going to listen. You, you know, your, your, your brothers and sisters, you know, your girlfriend or, or your boyfriend, they'll let your husband, your wife, they'll listen. But like it's so much more important that your 100th episode be awesome. Than it yeah. is that your first episode, first be, episode awesome? be awesome because yeah. by the time you get to 100 and that was a, a we were talking earlier about that 18 month curb you mm-hmm. and i both kind of went into the pie gassing game with that one year mark like i'm gonna do this for a year and we'll see what happens and if it doesn't catch then hey I, i'm gonna move on to something else well it's really it's between episodes 50 and 100 and it's so it's really okay. about that about that 18 month mark if uh-huh. you can stick it out to you know, episode, episode 60 70 somewhere around in there that you'll because we all think it's a curve that goes like this we all we all think our growth is going to go in a straight line it is exponential it grows like this so like Mm -hmm. you're just plotting along nothing 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 but once you start to hit that 18 month you start to see it go up quick and i don't know if it was just the timing or maybe if i'm doing something better whatever but for me personally my pot this podcast Mm -hmm. that episode 60 is where you started seeing it and it literally i mean for like one through 50 just nothing Mm -hmm. you know but then once you start to you know that it's it's held true for me so far Um, well that yeah i think with with a lot of things in life like you have to put in enough well just like when i was starting to try to lose weight and stuff i mean the first i would lose a pound or two you know here and there but for a while you know you have to build momentum and then you start getting better results and i think that's true for a lot of things you know well yeah with all of it it's like you got to start to establish some habits and routines. Mm-hmm. And if you can establish these best practices, these habits, routines, whether it be with a podcast or going through exercise or diet or, 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 or starting a business for that matter. It's like, mm-hmm. if you do all these little things consistently day after day, week after week, year after year, month after month, then they will bear fruit. And that, that's my other piece of advice. That's the number one thing that I piece of advice I give to all podcasters is no matter what, same day, same time, consistently. Yeah. No matter what, like you got to have enough in the hopper so that you are at the, because it's like, I tell people, it's like a television show. The people that are subscribing to you, they're mm-hmm. expecting that thing to show up at the same time every single week. And then the first time that it doesn't, guess what? Bye. Yeah. yeah. And, they, the and they'll one. notice something's up if they're paying attention. They'll be like, well, you know. And yeah, the problem is most of them aren't paying attention. So when it's just not there, you're just, you fall off the radar. Fall off the radar. Well, and I think my, one of my main challenges just with, especially with the podcast, but in all of my life is I expected immediate results with things. And yeah, when I and didn't both. get them, I would shift to the next thing. What do you mean? And, there aren't thousands of people waiting to hear me yeah. pontificate about how great I am. I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. And, and it, really I've been trying to um, kind of, just really integrate that I have to work through incremental change before I can make big progress, you know, like there, hopefully there will be a spike in in growth someday, but as long as I'm being consistent and making things incrementally better, that's the main thing I'm focused on. I think if we can, if we could just focus on our content, if that's Mm -hmm. all we would focus on, we would all be Everything so else much better place. served. Yeah. All yeah. the other stuff, all the SEO takes care of itself. All that marketing yeah. stuff. If you're putting out good quality content, I mean, I got it. There are tricks to the, I mean, you're learning right now. There are tricks to the trade, yeah. the things you need to do that will help that process along. But um, even if you have all the right SEO, if the content's not there, somebody's going to listen halfway, get like halfway through or two minutes in and be like, yeah, I'm not. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Not doing you know, this. Not going down this that, path. None yeah. of that means anything. If the content sucks, they're not going to stick around. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, that's again the other thing I counsel everyone on is like mm-hmm. content, content. content. Well, focus on how you can be better. Don't. I wish. I mean, like the one thing that's amazing about Libsyn, it's really cool, mm-hmm. is they have so many analytics. You can see yeah. so much detail, like where stuff is coming from, which country, you know, which players. Uh, but ah, uh, it's such a waste of time. Like, I mm-hmm. wish I didn't have access to all that. I wish that all of that, I didn't know anything, about, even numbers. Like, for that first 12 months, I wish I couldn't even see what, how bad I sucked. Because if I could just focus on what's important, mm-hmm. then, then it wouldn't matter. Yeah, I, I'm doing my best just to not even look at that. You know, I have my analytics set up and I have um, for my website, Google Analytics and all that. 
set in place, but I'm not, I'm trying to like check it and be aware of it, but not focus on it because, yeah. you know, that, that's, that kind of gives you that sense of urgency. Like, Oh, I, I have to do really awesome because, you know, nobody's listening now and I, and I want to make more people listen and that doesn't work, you know? Mm. So. so how are you going about promoting your podcast? How are you, uh, getting the word out how are you spreading well i have my website and i also have social media set up um and i'm like i said i met a lot of great people through um pod that i've shared with that have checked it out so but mostly through instagram facebook and twitter uh, my right. personal twitter and then um, i have pages linked to the podcast on, right. on facebook and instagram so cool that's exactly what we've done as well mm-hmm. absolutely i haven't done any ads or anything like that yet because I want to wait till I think they would actually be effective and my, I yeah. feel like my content's at the level that I want it to be at. So, well, that was one of the mistakes I made going into it early on. It was I, I, right when I jumped in, I was doing weekly advertising mm-hmm. and really uh, pumping a lot of money into that when I should have, like you said, just been focused more on the content and like building building a base then mm. going into the market. like now is the time i should be figuring out how to get into marketing and buying ads and everything and now i've already blew all that money so uh, yeah, i, I, I kind of did it mean. backwards yeah i'm trying to make sure first i want to you know get all my audio equipment and my editing skills all that stuff so everything has a good sound to it and sounds more streamlined and less because i took editing classes in college when i was working at the radio station but i used older older programs so i'm just relearning how to edit audio and because i'm doing what, my, what uh, software do you use do you like i'm using use? audacity now Audacity, so, okay. yeah because i figured that was you know it's free so it gives me a good baseline to learn from and then i'll, I'll probably invest you know in, in a different one eventually or i may just stick with that i don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah hey as long as you got one that works for you yeah and, 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 yeah exactly and a lot of them, I've, what I've looked, what I've come to find out, because I did Audacity for half a minute, and then I, I actually ended up with the uh, Hindenburg Pro, uh, but mm-hmm. they're all essentially the same, and they all kind of, I mean, Descript is definitely a little bit different in the way, in the mm-hmm. format of how it presents, but all the rest of them, Audacity, GarageBand, Hindenburg, even the Adobe stuff, it's all essentially the same basic premise, just everybody's got their own version of it. Yeah, that's like with well, I'm. I'm taking courses right now, as I mentioned before, in SEO and um, digital marketing, but eventually I want to take classes in graphic design. And I've been looking at the um, software for that, but I've been instead of using the Adobe suites, using like GIMP and open source stuff, because I figure as long as you know how to use the, know the basic techniques, that's what's important, you know, not that you have a specific, you know, set of software. Adobe has been on my list for like over a year now. And I just, man, I just can't find the time to get into it. I, yeah. I just, well, that's, I thought maybe if I learn, I want to learn through the open source stuff. And then if I want to invest in Adobe eventually, that way I won't invest in something and then be like, well, I don't know how to use it. And then just quit. You know? Yeah. I mean, obviously all that open source coded stuff is always going to serve you better in the long term because it's universal and mm-hmm. will apply to everything for sure. And I have my, my, my personal IT person and my husband. So that's always, <laughs> it's always good to have Linux. an IT guy in the family, right? <laughs> yeah. He's been running Linux and stuff since the early nineties. So he knows oh, a lot wow, about nice. that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. he's old school. Yeah. So nice. I, I just started running Linux when um, I crashed my windows back in 2010 and had to like figure <laughs> out how to do everything. But so I run both right now. Nice. Trying to, nice. So what's the most rewarding aspect of podcasting for you? Why do you do it? Because you know we don't make any money yet. So yeah. <laughs> two two main reasons. The first one is, you know, because I mentioned I've been through some challenging times and really turned my life around. And I, I want to be there for people who feel like p- people that are feel stuck. I want to let them know that there is the possibility of making changes in their life and encourage them. And um, the other thing is to kind of share my story just to like get the authentic of version of myself out there you know and in hopes of helping people and it's been it's been really great so far I've had people reach out to me that I didn't even really know like people just acquaintances on Facebook that have reached out and been like you know that really touched me or it it made me feel less alone and things like that and that's the most rewarding part just something that you help somebody yeah 
that I, I was, I didn't, I mean, I went into this with certain expectations and whatever, but that was, I don't know why I never really thought a lot about that, but that was very surprising to me at first. And now it's like you said, it's been so rewarding. It's like, mm -hmm. man, you talk about like filling the bucket. To yeah. have to, and especially when it's like, I mean, it's one thing when it's somebody that you knew or like that, like cause I've had a lot of like my old friends reach mm. out to me because like, I mean, when I first started this, a lot of the interviews I was doing with were old high school buddies. And so yeah. you'd see an old high school friend come, oh, you know, that was really cool or whatever. And that was really neat. But then now it's the point where I've got strangers that I just don't even know that mm -hmm. are sending me stuff occasionally and, 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 and commenting and saying what an impact something had on them or, you know, a guest that made a, a difference or whatever. And, or, or what's really cool is when I have a guest get reached out to and say, Hey, your conversation on that podcast really inspired me or, or you know, did this or that or whatever, mm -hmm. um, man, that I've had a couple of those and that's, that's probably the coolest of all. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm hoping to do because I feel like there's a lot of people out there that create inspiring and just con con content that, um, that makes you kind of like examine your life and inspires you to make the changes that you want to make. And I want to give like, you know, those people that are out there, I want to give them a voice and let them share with, with people because it's important that people like that are able to, you know, get their message out there because it, Have a it's platform. very important. Yeah. It's very, yeah, it's absolutely. very important. I think so. So tell me, how do you think is the best, besides the podcast and, and interviewing interesting people like that, how is Amanda going to help all these people? How, what's oh, the gosh. impact that you're going to make? How are you going to well, go about doing that, making that difference? The First and foremost, how I'm going to help other people is by being the best Amanda I can be. You know, <laughs> I think that's, that's important because I... For so long, I would try to jump into this because I always knew I wanted to help people, but I'd be like, you know, I'm not taking care of myself, but I'm going to help everybody else. And so, yeah, I'm trying to establish good routines in my life and and keep myself going in the right direction so that when somebody does need me, I'm leveled up enough to be able to help help them effectively and not, you know, don't react. I, I respond instead of react. And, and that's that is a beautiful answer. Be well, the best you. Amanda I can be, man. That is spot on, man. It's so true. So tell me about some of the things that, because we were talking before the podcast started, you're doing a lot of those things and you've had a, a pretty amazing journey, especially over the last two years and mm -hmm. in a couple of areas of your life. So it, let's see if you, if you miss any of them, I'm going to come back and hit them, but tell us some of those things that you've been doing. So since and the impact that they've had too. Yeah. Since 2019, first I started out, I was in a rough spot. I felt really stuck in my life and I'd kind of been spinning my wheels, just trying stuff and stopping. And I found a YouTube video suggesting um, gratitude journaling. And I thought, well, you know, that's important. So I started just doing three things every morning, which overflowed into 20 or 30. You know, very quickly. <laughs> funny how that worked. And then I, I started realizing, you know, there's changes I wanted to make and I learned about habit formation and um, different things. So I started making smaller changes since 2019. I've lost 75 pounds. I've um, amazing. And that, you know, the thing is more so I'm, I'm proud of the weight I've lost, but that's what I gained from it was more just awareness that there is hope and you can make changes that you thought were impossible because well yeah and i think that the the psychological changes in your life i mean the the, the weight is the result or the yeah the the, the after effect if you will or the loss mm -hmm. of weight but it's the the lifestyle that's mm -hmm. what's really changed right my whole perspective my whole mindset and i mindset, really realized yes. yeah like having a good mindset because when i wake up in the morning I, i'm a very tired person in the morning or sleeping, you know, it takes a, takes a couple minutes to get me fueled and ready for the day and, and, um, a good amount of coffee, but <laughs> well, I we really, earlier. yeah. And I, I've really realized how important it is when I first wake up, I kind of have my own area in the house here. I have my office and just to establish a good mindset first thing in the morning, you know, don't get up and dwell on what happened yesterday or what might happen, you know, just, just focus and you on said now. you're doing that through the gratitude journal. Is yeah. there, are you still doing that now or, and, oh, or what every, are you doing now? 
Okay, so I get up I, between four and five every morning, um, every day, and not always in the same order. I I get up, I listen to some affirmations and um, podcasts in the morning, and journal. I write at least three pages of three um, free form journaling. Wow! And then I after that I do my gratitude list after I do my three pages, and then um, I I have affirmations that I've written myself over the past two years, like a couple pages of those that I read out loud every morning. A couple and first, pages. Yeah. And you read the whole really all but you read all I that read, out every day. I read. Yeah. Some days would you, I'll, share, would you be willing to share one or two of those affirmations okay. with? I've the got audience? my journal right here. Let me find one. I'll find a good one. Um, I know one of them off the top of my head is I am exactly where I need to be because that's always good for me to remember that, you know, I might not be happy exactly with my circumstances, but they're teaching me a lesson that's important. Right. They're not ultimately um, where you want to end up, but it's where you want, where you need to yeah. be right now. I like that. Let me see. Um, here's one. I take action to create positive change where I am able, because that's, that's really been key for me. Um, we talked about the stoicism and stuff. Mm -hmm. Reading um, the obstacle is the way really just shifted my focus. I used to worry so much about all these circumstances that were beyond my, my realm of control. I would worry about is this person happy or, oh my gosh, this person might be feeling bad. And I, and I still, I care about those people, but I realize I can't affect that if I'm constantly worrying about it. I can only affect that if I'm, if I'm doing well and taking action positively, you know, so. Yeah, being that best Amanda you can be kind of yeah. thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> it goes back to that again. <laughs> exactly. For sure. Oh, that's brilliant. That makes perfect sense. Uh, let me get my questions here pulled up. Um, I'm, I'm oh, glancing at my affirmations. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So um, with the podcast, um, I'm curious if, since you do have a podcast, who is someone that you would like to interview? Who's somebody that fascinates you or, and, or if there was anyone that you could have besides Alan Watts, who would it yeah. be? Well, actually, um, that's still alive. The, the, the creator of that lo-fi music with yeah. Alan Watts. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so. Do you pay for that little subscription thing that he does? Or no, no, he, yeah, he just didn't. every evening on YouTube, he has a, um, now you can pay for the membership. Yeah. You know, to get but I don't understand why you would do that when he's putting it all out there for free. I didn't yeah. quite get it's the just, angle. It's kind of like a Patreon thing. I think it's it it production costs and stuff. Yeah. And, um, he does, Every morning on Twitch, he has a morning show that I go to. Oh, and if nice. you get Amazon Prime, they I do. gift you. Yeah, they gift you a, a premium Twitch subscription through Amazon Prime if you have that. Oh, so, I need to do that then because I do yeah. have Prime, and I, I've been trying to figure out Twitch. I need to yeah, get into I, that I world. That's one of the ones like I've one struggled channel. with. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not. You know, I think I think it's neat though that where it's a live streaming platform because yeah. eventually I think that. You know, doing things live like that fascinates me, but it would take a lot of courage for me because I tend to pre-plan everything, you know? It's so hard to, like, stick your neck out there, right? Like, yeah. to put it but out there. Because, like, I'm like you, I'm so addicted to, because of starting the podcast and starting in that world, I've gotten addicted to the ability to edit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, the ability to make myself sound smart even when I come off like an idiot, you know, <laughs> after the fact. So when you go live, it's all out there for the world to see how dumb you are. It's like, I know, I can't do that. Yeah, I think I need to get a footing just on the podcasting process and then yeah you know, like eventually one step at a time more. kind yeah, of thing right exactly yeah. don't want to overwhelm myself but. no but that's where i'm at i mean that's what they they say that uh that doing those live posts is definitely the way to go man mm -hmm. so, well, so i'm being told anyway i think uh, and one thing i've um i mentioned to you earlier i've been trying to since i've been adjusting my schedule up oh another thing that has really helped me is waking up early because i used to struggle with depression and i would just sleep you know just because i was trying to escape and so I started waking up, you know, gradually about eight in the morning for a while, did that for several months. And then I was reading about the benefits of waking up between, you know, five and six. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take the plunge. And I was getting up at about 10 and I went from getting up at 10 one morning to five the next morning. So there was a, a little bit of yeah. lack of sleep for a few days, but sure, it's, it's been, you know, I kind of dipped back down to about seven or eight for a while but here recently i've been sticking with the between four four thirty and five thirty and it's really been great so. what's been the biggest benefit of doing that you think it just it gives me the time to not feel rushed because i have a lot of things that i want to accomplish and do and 
I would, if I wake up late, I wake up with that sense of urgency, like, Oh, I got to hurry up and do stuff because I don't have time. And if I wake up, like, at like five, you're already behind the eight ball. Kind yeah. Of thing. And if I wake up at five, I have space and I don't have to rush and I can just take each thing and focus on it and just, you know, do it until I start to I've another tip. My husband was telling me about this because, um, with focusing on things is if you start to feel resistant to doing something, wait five minutes. And if you still feel resistant, then quit. And I, that that's mm. been such a thing. Cause I had the tendency to either give up when things got difficult or push through till, you know, I completely hit a wall, but I think just, you know, doing something, let it be challenging, wait five minutes and try to see if you can push through the challenge. And if you can't move on to something else, and that's been something I've been really trying to do too. And that's how, yeah, it's that whole concept. I, I re refer to that concept quite a bit in the wall of running a mm -hmm. marathon. I, I, I call it well, it, when you run a marathon, it's referred to as the wall. It's like when you're running those 26 miles around somewhere around 18 to 20 miles in, you hit this wall. Essentially, mm -hmm. it's a metaphorical wall, obviously, but it's like where everything shuts down, your body quits working, you're, you know, you're everything just you want to quit, you want to stop yeah. your everything is telling you, you cannot take another step, no matter what, like the, you're done. That's it. It's over. And if you can just take one more step, if you can just walk, just keep going and just very slowly, but methodically keep moving towards that end goal. Then what happens is, is like it fades and it goes away and you get that second, not, not second win, but just you realize that you can push through. You realize mm -hmm. that you can keep going and that it was all a mental block. And then now you realize that you're really capable of a lot more than you ever thought. And I think that's a very, eye-opening experience that I really encourage everyone to have that experience in their life because of the mental toughness and the fortitude that you get from it. Funny enough, um, in my podcast that I release on, well, I'll release it Sunday. Um, I said that I realized recently that life is a marathon, not a sprint because I was trying to, you know, take off at a hundred miles per hour from the starting line. And then, you know, not understanding why I'd, I'd pass out within a few yards you know it was like well, and we've even taken it a step farther uh, a step further my father calls it it's not a marathon it's a series of sprints so oh. it's like it's not just the 100 yard dash it's running a marathon in 100 yard dash increments so it's like you're oh. doing this one sprint but then you got another one and that's like you gotta you, yeah because there's because and and i don't know if you've had this experience but like for me because we're trying to do that exact same thing we've got the book concept we've got a personal development thing we've got a podcast we've got mm -hmm. these three or four different things that we're trying to build up into you know this one organization this one business or whatever mm -hmm. and so what i would find is okay i'd have this surge in the podcast and i'd get a lot of interviews a lot of good work done and then i would dry up or things would kind of get to a standstill there and then i'd go to get in the personal development and the eight keys to great and then i'd have this mm -hmm. surge there and get a lot of good work done there and then the podcast you know so it was like it was constantly just a, it was a sprint to the on the podcast and it would shift to the sprint on the eight keys to great then it'd be a shift to the book and so it was like i was constantly going from one to the other but it was like once you hit that wall it was like okay we'll just move on to the next one and it allows you to keep that momentum going yeah i think um that's, that's really what I'm trying to do too, where I've been like last week, I really, really focused on, you know, podcast production, things like that. And I'm still focusing on that, but I've also focusing on coursework. So, you know, I'm kind of, so it, it, yeah. That constant focus, juggling act. It's like, how many balls can I have in the air at one time? Yeah. Just focus <laughs> intently on one thing and, but keep, be consistent with all the others too. And I've really had to narrow down, like I've got three areas that I want to, you know, try to narrow it down to like three areas that I really want to focus on and everything else is just kind of the periphery because I had a tendency to try to juggle like 16 things. And yeah, it's too much. Then you, you gotta just get hit in the head. You know? Two, like, uh, well, in, in the four uh, disciplines of execution, 4DX, mm -hmm. Uh, they talk about a lead measure is what it's, it's or no, I'm sorry, it's a wig. It's what's your wildly important goal. And it's like, oh. you can have one or two and that's it. Yeah. Like you got to have those two areas. of As soon as you get above and beyond that, well, then it becomes too much and you're, you're going in too many different directions and getting spread too thin. Yeah. Last week I made, um, well, actually maybe a couple weeks ago, I made a piece of paper that was just like three things at that point that were my main focuses and I hung it on my wall. Cause that way, 
if I would glance at that and realize I was, you know, going outside of those areas and not focusing on those things, I would, it would bring me back to those things. So. That's awesome. Yeah. And I try to incorporate that into my morning routine. It's like, okay, well, what's the one or two things today that's going to move me forward to my end goal? You know, mm-hmm. there's, there'll be a lot of distractions. There'll be a lot of stuff that happens through the course of the day, but what are the one or two things today that I need to accomplish? That I can check off and say, okay, that got me closer to where I ultimately closer. need to be. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, that's a great thought. Cause I've been trying to, you know, make my to-do list and I, then a lot of times I'll make it at night and take one thing off, you know, the thing that's the least important to me because that way I don't overcrowd my day. And I've also been putting like intense on the top, like, nice. you know, I, I like, things that when I wake up in the morning and I'm kind of sleepy and, you know, need my coffee, I can glance at and be like, Oh, well, this is what I want to remember to keep in mind today. And it kind of gets my mindset going. So. Yeah. That's the problem I ran to my to-do list became just little things to remember. Like I, cause I didn't want to forget stuff. So I was like making these to-do lists just so I wouldn't forget. And like yeah. that stuff, like emails, you know, like these minutia mm-hmm. tactics. But then again, yeah. the problem with that is like, I get this full page of to-do list stuff. And it, and once you have that, it makes it really hard to get that one or two really, really important things done. And that's what's yeah. been the case with me week after week. It's like, I'm not, I'm, I'm getting things done. But like I said, for me, that one or two important thing is getting that book finished and getting that mm-hmm. concepts done so I can move on to publishing and editing and all that. But it's like I allow emails and podcast interviews and all these other little distractions to get in the way. I mean, they're all important, but yeah. they're all not. I mean, but that's the number one thing I've got to figure out how to be focused on. Well, I, I've been trying to block off where I'm doing um, a couple really focused things right now for me are my coursework and the podcast, which are intertwined since the yeah. course is on SEO, but, um, I've been is that what you're doing your course morning. on your course is on SEO. Yeah. It's, um, it's an SEO certification course, um, oh, nice. through UC Davis. So no, but I meant the course that you're trying to create what the course that oh, you're putting out there well, for the world. I haven't, I haven't put up. a course. I haven't really started to formulate that yet. I know it'll be something, but is it within the know. personal development realm or yes. is it more like oh, an yeah. IT SEO type of realm? Oh, no, it, it will be personal development. Personal development. Okay. Yeah, but I've yeah, got so to figure out. So kind of like out, me with the eight keys kind of concept. Kind of probably just what comes into my mind is something about, you know, navigating changes and unforeseen circumstances and improving, you know, things cool. like that. But I like it. not certain, just. Yeah. brainstorming at the moment you know well it, it's the hardest part you know like mm. getting it from what conceptually is, is in your mind to mm. getting it on paper with like really fleshed out like that's where that's what's been the most difficult part of the process for me i think what i'm going to do where i'm writing this um during the writing course is just kind of wait till i finish that whole process and save it all then give myself a couple of days and come back and read it and kind of pick out what were the key things that were beneficial for me and try to figure out a way to transmit how to do that to other people. You no, know? I think that's and, brilliant. Yeah. Cause I think when you go back and read it after the fact, um, I think certain things will stand out to you and, and yeah. you get that kind of 10,000 foot view of, okay, here's the two or three key main points that I can then pull from and build on. Yeah. As opposed to, you know, just when you're up, when you're just in the moment and it's just, you know, blah, 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 I call it puking on a page and it's just all yeah. there. You Brain dumping. Yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't get that backed up view and kind of make sense of it all well yeah when I was scripting my first podcast um yeah I made it my backstory and I was like five or six pages in and I hadn't even got to the core part of what I was trying to get to and I was like <laughs> yeah it makes you realize like you're yeah, just you I gotta was, streamline it right yeah. you gotta and I was like nobody's gonna listen to me for 40 minutes before I get to the point so I just threw that all away and I had it fresh in my mind and then I wrote a blog and then published the blog and it got good feedback and then, so I took the main points from that and made a bullet list. And that's what I went with for my podcast. Ah, it's beautiful. It's exactly yeah. what I'm learning through this process. It's like, so I would try to go on and do these Facebook lives, you know, it's cause I was, you gotta be doing this and putting yourself out there. And so I did mm-hmm. as a 30 day challenge and I going back and looking at it, the fact that I would get to rant and just mumbling and whatever for eight to 10 minutes. I'm like, dude, that's like nobody's I mean, that, that's not succinct. So like what what you did, what I started doing is I, I now I'm gonna write a blog post on whatever I'm gonna talk about. Then that mm-hmm. that will then become content for the blog. And it's basically a rough draft for what you're gonna say. It clarifies your thoughts. You get your one or two, three key main points, and then go do that Facebook live after I've done the blog. And then it's like 
it's just it's almost like it's like your rough draft it's it's yeah. three different every time you say that story it becomes better every time i wrote it out it became better so by the time i had written out the blog post and then go do the facebook live it was only two to three minutes i got all the points out and it was much more clear succinct direct and over and done with and it just it presented so much better yeah, I've kind of switched up my my flow on things since I'm going to be doing interviews now. I'm going to have my interview released every Monday. And then what I'm going to do is post a blog on Friday, kind of giving myself time to synthesize what I learned. And, you know, and is your blog post related to the interview in some way? Yeah, it's going to be oh, basically beautiful. what I learned from the interview. Nice. That's and, probably what I should do, too. But I, I've just been right about whatever I could think of at the moment or whatever strikes my but, fancy. We'll see. But I had a I couple need to be blogs. more intent with that. I had, gosh, two blogs that I seriously posted on for a while um, back in 2012 or 13. Oh, nice. And um, so, yeah, I used to do that too. I'd just be like, oh, I feel like writing about this and write about it. Just more like an online journal kind of. Right. But then I, I realized if I really want to help people, I need to kind of be clear on what my message is and, and focus on that. So Yeah. I mean, I, I try to have a very specific point. Yeah. Um, and, and what I'm doing now is uh, I'm taking my eight keys and I'm doing mm -hmm. I'm doing one for each of the eight keys. And what that's making me do, because right now when somebody said, well, tell me about the eight keys are great. Well, I got about a, a, a minimum of about a 20 minute spiel to mm -hmm. get through all of those eight keys. Well, I've got to figure out how to spend, you know, 30 to six, 30 to 60 seconds at the most on each of the eight. Like if I only spent 30 seconds on each key. That's still mm -hmm. a four minute diatribe on the thing. That's a lot, you know, like that's yeah. a lot. And, but there's so much that I'm going to pack in it. So now I'm trying to, okay, well, how can I just hit the very highlighted, most important aspect and then move on to the next one so that it's succinct and it's yeah, clear that, and it's concise and it's, it's hard. It's so yeah, hard to do. That, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, one thing I realized too, with doing an interview series like this, where I'm trying to kind of find my message, um, you know, get it more streamlined. When you're interviewing people who inspire you and bring meaning to the world. And I can kind of justify that with anybody, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have to stay in a certain niche with that because my niche is just, these are people that bring meaningful contributions to the world and that can be from anywhere people. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean you could be a fascinating dairy farmer you know you can be a fascinating yeah. plumber you know if you're if you're doing it right it's all it's all the the way you approach life i think that makes yeah. you fascinating well i mean yeah. that's you know i mean that's for us i mean that's the tagline of the show it's ordinary people living extraordinary lives you know because i believe that everybody has some aspect of their life that that can have a positive impact on other people Absolutely. And I, I'm excited to get started doing the eight keys to great and talk to you about it on the podcast. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. And but, you're forcing me to level up because now it's like you're uh, agreed to do this beta, beta testing for me. It's like, I got to have my stuff together for you guys. Well, and I thought, especially where, um, you know, I'm going through this process myself of, of figuring out how I want to, you know, do my yeah, hopefully life. It'll provide some value to your yeah. program as well. Like, Hey, if you, all to, these concepts are the same. We're all just stealing from one another at the end yeah. of the day. It's all the same stuff, you know? Well, I thought it would give me more direction because I tend to approach things from my own way of thinking and my own perspective and just approaching it from somebody else's perspective, like builds on, you know, gives yeah. me more insight. So, Well, yeah, that's what it is. It's like all these, that's how this all, all this stuff works. It's like all the concepts are all there. They've all been around for a hundred years. I mean, there's no, there's not a lot of really new I mean, other than technology stuff or whatever, yeah. but like the core personal development fundamentals are essentially the same. So it's like mm -hmm. what each of us brings to the table is our own personal perspective on these things. And when we can bring our, like for me, I mean, eight keys, the great is based on construction. It's based oh, wow. on being a construction. It's based on how you renovate your house. You remodel your life the way you would remodel your house because I'm a contractor. I mean, that's my background oh. is swinging a hammer. So the eight keys to great for me are like, you know, swinging a hammer. How do you knock down the old walls, knock down the bad habits and create, you know, a lifestyle or a home that you uh, love or that's your dream home or your dream life. So that's, you know, when I wrote my first blog, I, because I wanted to present it in a way that would, um, you know, kind of make sense. So I presented it like I was on a quest and I yeah. talked about everything and the concept was like, this is my quest and this is what happened. And 
so yeah, that I, I think having something like that as a almost like an analogy that you can refer to that people understand, you know, like make it like a legend of Zelda and, thing or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I was even um, I was I had notes to do a, a podcast on change. That was what my next podcast was going to be on. And then I happened to meet this lady through Podfest that is a motivational speaker on change. So I thought, well, I'm just going to she's the expert we'll have a discussion instead of just, you know, me talking. But I, I, when I was making my notes, one thing that came to mind, I, I got a new pair of leather boots. And I was saying, you know, when you first buy a new pair of boots, they're uncomfortable if they fit properly. But after you walk through them for a while, then they're the most comfortable shoes you've ever owned. And that's kind of how like life is. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of how life is, you know, it's sometimes the little bit of discomfort gets you exactly where you want to go. So. That's a great metaphor because I think that little bit of discomfort is the only way to get to where you want to be, to where you're. And the most I can't remember who it was that says um, somebody, my husband referred to when we first started working out, um, there was this guy he was listening to that would say something about like embrace the suck or embrace the hurt or embrace the pain. Yeah, because that, you just gotta, that, is that uh, is it Jocko? I was going to say that sounds like Jocko. I, he was it's listening to Jocko be. at that time. So probably it's either him something. or David Goggins. One of the two. <laughs> that yeah, one, right one of those. We were, yeah. We were listening to both of them. Embrace so. the suck. Yeah. And that's kind of like what I've had to, that was, that was one of the main keys for me as far as just getting over the transition of losing weight and changing my life was you know, it's not always going to be easy. And I, so many times I looked for like a magical solution to all my problems or a way to escape them and, and jump into another area of my life. And if you're really going to make sustainable change, you're going to have to work through, you know, the, the tough stuff I realized for me, at least, you know, so. I like to use the metaphor. You talk about like a journey or a quest. I like to use the metaphor of a hike. Um, yeah. And if hiking downhill is easy, easier mm -hmm. in theory, but and hiking uphill is harder. But the best views are always at the top. So if you're always so if, so if you want to know the right way to go, it's the harder way. It's the yeah. way that's uphill. And if you'll take that harder route, the payoff is always worth it. It's like the road less traveled. That yeah, exactly. That poem. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Well, and that that brings to mind because I grew up on a farm in, in like a wooded farm. So hiking up hills was something that I always enjoyed a lot. And um, yeah, and that, that was one thing that when I was having rough times in my life, I would force myself to hike up to the top of the hill and sit under an apple tree and just kind of meditate and chill for a little bit. So I can definitely really? relate to that. Yeah. How about that? That That's was one cool. of the main things. Um, I shared this in my, my blog, but this is two key things happened in 2010 that just were like catalysts for me that were outside things. One was kind of like a, a realization and it happened. I had gained a bunch of weight in 2008. I gained 90 pounds in three months um, due to medication and things. And um, it was in, oh goodness, probably May of May of 2010. My grandfather had just passed away and I decided I'd go for a walk. I just needed to clear my head. So I ended up hiking to the top of this hill, which is on the family farm. And it was, it was a pretty steep hill. And I was like, 90 pounds plus overweight. So it was not the easiest hill to hike up. And I, I got it to the top and I just kind of sat there under the apple tree to kind of get my breath because I was like, you know, exhausted. But then I started to cry. And it's funny because like I bottled up all this emotion for so long. I wasn't, I was sad about my grandfather, obviously, but it was just like everything came rushing out at once. But it's, I came to this realization at that point that I would rather feel like intense sadness occasionally than not to feel anything, you know, cause I've been running from stuff for so long and that just gave me space to be like, okay, I'm going to change stuff. And then the other thing that happened in 2010 was, um, in September, I met the guy that I later married and that was just, you know, like he entered stage left and it, it just, that was unexpected and serendipitous. So, so those are, I always appreciate good serendipity. <laughs> what well, I think it's interesting that the the one thing happened before the second thing. I think that that well having that discovery period and like opening up your eyes a little bit, it, it opens you up to mm -hmm. new opportunities and new relationships and new. And the thing is, I've been in some some relationships. You know, not always the best ones, not always the worst ones. I mean, I was at fault too, or whatever. But I always knew I wanted a relationship, but. I also like around that time with the apple tree experience, I, I just came to this realization, even if I never meet 
anybody. I'm okay with who I am. And that's, that's enough, you know, and it would be nice if I met other people and then I did. And, you know, that's great. But I think a lot of times before you enter a relationship, you really have to be okay with who you are as a person, even if it's not exactly where you want to be. Cause at that point I could change it. So, but yeah, just, just having the awareness that acceptance for yourself, even if you don't like your circumstances or like exactly how your life is going, just accept where you are and, and move forward. You know, that's, that's been key for me. So. I know. I think that's so profound because I think so many of us, when we're single, we're looking for that person, that perfect mate. And we've got this checklist of all mm-hmm. these things that they need to be. They got to have this. They got to do this. They got, and they're like, you have this thing of like what you, I, visualize as this perfect person and mm-hmm. we and that the people that struggle to have relationships or to to have long-term relationships it seems like they're constantly looking to that other the people who tend to have really stable and healthy relationships or the people who tend to find these long-term relationships are the ones that are inwardly inwardly reflecting the ones that are well, how can i be the best person that i can be how am i trying to fix my life and when And I think I personally believe that the act and the process of that Mm self-refinement makes you attractive and appealing to other people. I think that draws other people to you to then provide those relationships and provide those opportunities to have a relationship. And this is the challenge even after I was married, you know, because I got married, I was so thrilled and I was kind of like, okay, what now? You know, (laughs) but I kept on for so long looking for outward validation. I was looking for someone else to complete my life or complete my happiness or give my life meaning. And time and time again, you know, people will let you down or circumstances won't align, but you have to just be okay with who you are. And if you, if you have like internal integrity, you'll get through it, you know? And I kind of like curated this, this image that I would present to other people. Like I would be miserable inside but I'd be like, Hey, I'm so happy and positive. Look at me. My life's perfect. Especially social media, I think lends itself to that. Oh, yeah. And so I had this highly curated blinding positivity that was probably really obnoxious for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. I'd get up and be like, hi, it's a beautiful day. I love everybody. And people are like, Amanda, you know what? And then, <laughs> and then yeah, I just got the to the point. <laughs> yeah. I was really over the top and I was miserable inside. I just didn't want to even come to terms myself with how miserable I was and you can't make changes if you don't accept where you are you know and well and about, not just, that but it's hard to hide that you know that that yeah. tends to show through even a facade mm-hmm. you know eventually well yeah people can people can tell when you're not being authentic yeah. I think at least. Uh, yeah 100 oh, and um people don't like that I mean at least most people don't respond well to that because you feel like if they're not pres- if someone's not being authentic like what else are they going to try to deceive me about yeah and what else are they being insincere about at the end of the day yeah and i you know i, I don't want to be like that i want to be honest and have integrity and well no it, it totally stuff. comes through in, in your personality and your conversation i mean it, it your your originality and your sincerity oozes out of oh, you well, thank so you. that's uh, it's very it was, appealing it was something that's only like just really recently come to the surface as far as like the way i interact with other people i think Um, because even when I started doing better personally, you know, a lot of times people don't, well, a a lot of people don't respond well when you start making changes, positivity. Yeah. And it's funny how that works. Yeah. And it's not, you know, I was never, I was never trying to like brag or be like, look how well I'm doing to like brag. It was just, I wanted to share because I was happier, you know, absolutely. As well, you should trying to find a balance of being like, Hey, this is what I'm doing and I'm proud of it. And coming off as like, look at me. It, right. you know, that's challenging. Well, and that can be a tricky line to, to mm-hmm. balance on. That could be a, that can be a bit of a tightrope, but I, I, I totally resonate with that. And you want to inspire, as, you want to get people motivated to want to have that share that same experience for them. Exactly. Like when I lost weight, for example, I didn't share a photo or tell anybody I was trying to lose weight until I'd lost 50 pounds. Wow. Because well, for me, for two reasons, for one, I, I just, and, and when I, I made one post that said like a before and after, or maybe, maybe two eventually just for context and to share, mm-hmm. yeah, but, sure. um, 
I didn't want to start out and be like, I'm going to lose weight because then I would feel pressure. Like, oh, if I mess up, everybody will know. So or if I, I fail. I'm, yeah. If I don't meet those goals now, what about, everybody will know. Yeah. yeah. So I waited till I'd actually like done it myself for myself. Cause that was important. I didn't need to think, oh, I'm doing this to impress my Facebook friends or doing this to impress my husband. Good. I was doing it cause I was miserable and I wanted to make changes. And then, um, you know, I shared it once when I lost 50 pounds and then I just never mentioned it again. You know, I've shared pictures of myself since and people respond, but you know, a, a lot of times people tend to like, especially if they think you're trying to brag about your, your results, they don't, they don't take away the right message that you're trying to send. Cause I was never, I would never want to send that. Yeah. I would never want to make somebody who's struggling with their weight feel of course not bad, you know? Yeah. And that's cause you, cause you know what that feels like. You yeah, know, that's exactly. Struggling. Yeah. <clears throat> I found pictures of myself going through my computer and um, I didn't even know they existed of when I was in 2009, when I was at my biggest weight and it was pictures, you know, most of the time, I had developed skills of like taking selfies to where you can't, you know, the right yeah. angle. So I looked about 40 pounds lighter. The art of the selfie. <laughs> yeah. But these were family uh, And Christmas. by the way, I suck at that so bad. I have no oh, skill at whatever. I, I, comes to I have to make decent those... selfie skills. <laughs> I, you I, need I to learned... teach me a few things because I'm horrible. Ugh. <laughs> but I, I someone on this picture that was taken at a family Christmas. So, you know, everybody was like not worried about my selfie framing and right, i was right. like slouched down on a couch very unflattering and somebody bad a picture posture of me. everything bad posture yeah. yeah it was the worst picture of me i've ever seen there was that one and then one where i was posed a little bit but still like you know severely overweight and they they got saved in a file uh, on a memory card at my parents house well i'd forgotten about those and then after I started losing weight in 2019, after I lost about 50 pounds, my mom gave me the memory card to save pictures from Christmas. And I stumbled I upon these photos Nice. and I didn't even recognize myself. I was just like, wow. wow, I remember how it felt to be in that situation, but I didn't even look like myself. I was just like, wow, <laughs> you know, mm. it was, it was so I, for my 10 year Facebook thing. Um, they had the challenge where you post like, pictures of you when you first started your Facebook and then pictures now. Well, I had lost a hundred pounds from the wow. time I started my Facebook till 2020. So I posted, I posted the, the first picture, which it took a lot. I wouldn't have been able to share that picture with anybody unless I had results, you know? Right, right, right. Uh, Positive results makes it yeah. uh, a little easier, doesn't it? <laughs> because if you go back, like if you go back to the beginning of my Facebook, it saw my, my profile pictures. I, I don't look like I was, nearly you know the person that i was i was yeah you're able and, to sculpt it just right or yeah and i think that's just right just that whole idea of social media sculpting of yourself and not presenting who you really are has has been damaging for a lot of people oh certainly uh, my, especially my, for the young people yeah because you have this like this self of who you truly are and then the self you feel like you present to the world and, and yeah. if they're like not congruent with one another or whatever it's just um or the, and, a the, lot of and the hate you can get online too i mean like that that online mm -hmm. hate can be detrimental to a young person oh ego. absolutely because everybody you know i learned outward validation it's nice if people like you of course sure, that's preferred course. you always want that yeah you always want that but you know you, i think it's important to you'll have to deal with with haters or whatever and that's something i've learned even just with the podcasting i've I was always afraid, you know, what if people don't like it or if they think what I have to say is is stupid, but you'll never know unless you try. And and if somebody doesn't like it, they don't have to listen. You know, they can listen to something else. I'm just sharing because I want to, you know, yeah. and that that's kind of where I'm well, taking the, it. Well, the hater thing, I just had a post the other day I put up. It was pretty cool. It said like no one, uh, anyone who's doing better than you is never going to criticize you. Yes, the I ones saw that. that are criticizing you are I the like ones that, who are I'll always think. doing worse than you. And so like, I think about like, there's always going to be people who are just never committed to improving their life. They're just going to be wallowing in their own self pity. Mm -hmm. They're always just like uh, Jim Rowan calls it. There's just people who just aren't going to buy. Like if you're yeah. selling something, there's just people who just, they're just not interested. They're just not going to buy it. And those, the ones who aren't willing to step out, the ones who aren't willing to put in the effort, the ones who aren't willing to get outside their comfort zone, those are the haters. Those yeah. are the people who are, who are wasting their time picking on you, trying to keep you in the same mode that they are. Because if, when you change, it shows them that they are capable of change. 
yeah, they don't want to no, be challenged. That's excuse. They don't, and they don't like to hear that. They want to, yeah. oh, well, I got a bad knee. I can't do, I can't go for a walk. I, I got a bad back. I, you know, there's, you know, I can't do that. I can't do this. Well, when they see someone else in yeah, a worse like, way well. going and doing that, well, there goes that excuse right out the window. So you're always going to get hate from those type of people. So yeah, um, I look at that as a badge of honor. If I'm getting some hate like that, I'm like, okay, well, then I'm doing something right. And I've really been paying attention recently to um, the, the whole concept of the the five people that you surround yourself with ah, the most. Yes, yeah, my favorite. because, you know, there, there, are, there are people that you'll be around that are negative that you have to be around, you know, but try to min minimize that, I think, and just surround yourself with, you know, like. But that was I the impetus of this podcast. Yeah, that's why that's why I did. It's like, all right, so I want to learn from all these really cool, smart people. They're doing these really cool, smart, neat things. Well, yeah. how do you get in front of those people? You start a podcast, podcast. and you start to talk them to you. Yeah, that, to that's you. that's. I mean, we have very similar premises, like you know, <laughs> you know. And like, how do you get yeah. the research for the book? Well, you just get the yeah. guests that have the answers, and you just steal everything from them. <laughs> and you're good to You'd go. be like, I'm going to write about you in my book. Well, and it's like you have to. Um, I've, I've really been paying attention to, I want to stay aware of what's going on in the world. Of course, you know, I try to, but I can't like, I don't even know how to present it. Like I have to not overload myself with negativity, you know, no, absolutely. especially with things I can't, especially in areas where I don't have any impact, you know, like worrying about certain things isn't going to be effective or helpful for any anybody you know well, so and not just, only that but it's like yeah you do want to be aware aware of the world and i hear that argument all the time like why mm -hmm. i watch the news well i got to know what's going on in the world i got to know what's going on well what i've been i've been doing a little experiment and i've been specifically mm -hmm. limiting some of that so i'm i'm specifically not informed specifically yeah. not necessarily getting all that relevant relevant information that it's supposed, yeah. supposedly so important and what i've found is guess what you yeah, don't it need that. it really doesn't matter i mean yeah there are a few things here and there yeah if covid you know shuts or a new version of covid starts really killing people then it's you know one thing or whatever but most of this stuff is just it's yeah you, know, you, you could you could go your whole life without hearing it and it really wouldn't impact you it really wouldn't make a difference at the end of the day one thing well my husband and i we got rid of cable back in 2012 we just oh, decided nice. we were spending much too time much too much time focused on tv and then we don't really watch news. He'll see headlines online if something's of importance. I'll go to him. He's like my news resource. I'm like, is there yeah. anything going on in the world today? I need anything to know, I need about, to know about. All right, cool. I'm good. And it's really helped my mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm good. Because it's just, yeah, it's too much, too much. Well, I cut sometimes. you off. And you were I'm about very to say it helps your mindset. That's It really yeah. does. It changes our it mindset. It really does. One thing my husband and this, this can apply to the news or life in general. One time he would tell me, you know, think if you're worried about something, think, is this going to affect me a week from now? Is this going to affect me a month from now? Is this going to affect me a year from now? And if it won't affect you in those amount of times, then you don't need to worry about it. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I, remember I mean, I'm we all for 10 year plans and all that, but yeah, as far as like affecting you. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. we gotta, we gotta evaluate. Well, when we were getting planning our wedding, I planned my wedding by myself. We we had a great wedding. It was fun, but I was trying to like, I was worrying about everybody's opinions. I wanted to be all you know right and everything nice. And I remember he sat me down and he was like, "Okay, whose opinion matters in this situation? Make a list." And I made a list. And he's like, "Okay, does this person's opinion really matter? Whose opinions really matter?" And I was like, "Mine and yours and our family's a little bit." And he was like, "Yeah, that's all you need to focus on." That's and all. I was like, oh. Yeah. And, yeah. and really, it's just you and him at the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> as long as he's happy and you're happy, then. Pfft, yeah, that, that was that was the key. You know, I wanted to make sure that my family was and his family was included and had fun of and course, some of our friends. Of course. But, you want to be but yeah, you, you get too many opinions flying at you and you try to please everybody. And being I was like a a, a chronic people pleaser. Like, yeah. And you can never do that. Right. You can never please. No, everybody. You're never going to satisfy everybody. And, and if you if you satisfy everybody else, you'll probably be miserable. Yourself. You're going to be miserable. Yeah. yeah. And what I found is if you're doing the right things and if you're doing your thing, then their opinions are either going to line up or they're going to fall off to the wayside. One or the other, yeah, you know, exactly. Like, and yeah, it's just they become irrelevant. You know, exactly. That's things. a yeah. great way of putting it. <sighs> There's a couple of things I still want to ask you. Um, okay. we'll, I'll try to get through I'll these a little bit quick. <laughs> you're you're beautiful. You've done a 
perfect job. Everything this is, is my first podcast interview ever. This is I haven't been interviewed since since college. So this awesome. has been a great, ah, great well, time. What better place to do it, right? Than the extraordinary exactly. podcast. <laughs> so, I feel extraordinary. Um, there you go. Well, you are. You're living in a, you are living in an, an extraordinary life. And that's exactly the type of person that we're looking for. So you are and the fact that we're basically like little twins here. We're I know I'm a little it's bit amazing. older than you, but we're right on the same wavelength. So that's always encouraging that's to have someone like that around. Um, so if you had a billboard mm -hmm. for all the world to see, what mm -hmm. would you put on that billboard? And before you answer that one, the second question, you'll have to think about this one for a minute. What's your favorite item under a hundred dollars that you could not live without that you use on like a regular everyday basis? Oh my goodness. Cheaper, the better. Cheaper, the better. Okay. The billboard one's easy. Usually people have a message that they want for the world to hear or to see or mm -hmm something like that what what would you put on your billboard um my billboard would me would say like um choose meaning or something like that like choose because, meaning yeah because i mean that's vague but if i would want something concise and eye-catching and, and thought-provoking but a lot of times in life things are challenging and not happy but if you find a, if you pursue the path that's more meaningful for yourself you'll always end up on the right path i, think. I like that the pursuit i stole of that from jordan peterson thing. actually so. <laughs> that sounds well, not, that's not the billboard quote but the concept I yeah think. no absolutely no there's uh those concepts in his 12 rules are spot on yeah for uh, sure and they're universal and they hold up so oh i'm, I'm Your torn favorite um, item under a hundred dollars cheaper the better that you Sarah. could not live without that you use on an everyday basis i am going to say my journal oh awesome. i write it every morning I, I was, love it. I would, you know, I love music and it would be challenging for me to deal without music. But if I had a journal to express my thoughts, then I could deal without music for a while. You could keep you sane, right? Yeah, I could I could write song lyrics in it or something to remind myself. If I That's amazing. <laughs> well, well, like I said, we barely scratched the surface, so we may have to come back for a part two at some point at a later date, because I think we have a whole lot more that we could talk about. And I really want to spend some more time as you begin to work out your personal development plan, um, spend some more time with that one. Uh, but before we go, uh, tell everybody where they can find you, uh, social media, any of that kind of stuff that you want to put out there for all the world to see. And last but not least, if there's any charity or organization that you're involved with that's doing some good work that you want to talk about now is your opportunity to uh, promote that um you can find all of my podcast blog and then i have a little gallery um, on my website at heightenedlife.org and as far as social media all the links to my social media for the podcast are on that website so that's heightenedlife.org or you can follow me on Twitter. Um, I just post personal, like positive insights and stuff on there. And it is um, at Amanda Dawn Goin, G O I N 1. And awesome. um, as far as charitable organizations, I just say, because I'm not really involved in any organizations right now, but I just promote everybody just being kind to one another, you know, just try to, I think that that's the biggest thing you can do. Just be kind to somebody you don't think deserves it because you don't know what they're going through. So that's my oh, charitable like that. contribution. So. That's a, that's a great note to end on being kind to someone that you may not necessarily think deserves it or somebody that's kind of got you in a bad way. Cause we all say to be kind, we should all be nice to one another, but it's not always easy to be nice to the guy who's being a jerk. Yeah. But, Cause I I've been, I haven't deserved kindness beforehand have got it and it's really helped me so yeah well and, and that guy who's being a jerk is chances are he's going through something that's causing yeah. him to act that way and, and causing him to be in that kind of state of mind that's a amazing perspective and your um mentality your outlook is pretty amazing having that learning mindset and that that mindset of growth it's evident in what you're doing and it's evident in your personality and i don't know what you were like before that but um having that mindset now is it's going to serve you well in life. And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch your journey as oh, you well, put you. all this together. So I'm really excited to be on the front end of this, but um, sure. uh, thanks for your time. Thanks for your feedback and your information. And most of all, thanks for being a beta tester for this. Absolutely. I'm, I'm really so excited looking about forward. That. I'm so looking forward to going through this and I now I'll reach out with any questions and, 
And I very much look forward to you joining me on the other side on my podcast. And yep. And we'll be picking up part that. two over there, I guess, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll we'll do go it from all there. Again. But this will be more focused on, on you and your story because, awesome. you know. So. Well, I'm looking forward to it for sure. Amanda, thanks so much. And uh, we'll look forward to it again soon. Oh, thank you so much.